Hi, good evening. We've had such great sessions since morning and I'm very optimistic and determined that we're going to beat this one <laughs> with ours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know, there aren't too many leading ladies in Indian cinema who can claim to have the kind of success that my guest here today has achieved. And at an age where most of us, if you'd recall, were barely starting out. And uh, we'd see how she's kind of within a very short span of time grown as a superb actor, entrepreneur, and even now a producer. Before we start, could I please request you to put your hands together again for the national award winner, oh. Alia Bhatt. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alia. It's your debut at the HT Leadership Summit and we are very, very happy to have you here. And I had to put that national award icing <laughs> in the introduction because you're really fresh out of that. I believe it's your first outing after the national award. Yes. Um, I really would want to start by asking you what was going on in your mind, let's say five seconds before your name got announced and you went up there to get the award from the president? Well, I have to say I was a extremely um, enamored and just so impressed with how well organized it was. And there were so many people from so many different, um, you know, groups um, in the filmmaking industry. So technicians, actors, writers, cinematographers, sound recorders, everyone. Um, and it was like clockwork, walking up and, you know, everybody was clapping for everybody. And it was just so meticulous. And like, I loved the, I loved how well organized it was. So it was really very like overwhelming in general to be there, you know, um, and it, it, it's like a pinch me moment. But five seconds before, if I have to actually recall, exactly what happened is actually quite a lovely moment that Kriti and I shared together because she was standing in front of me and um, she looked back at me and she said, I, I, I want, I just let's, I want to give you a hug. Yeah. And I just hugged her and it was just like, and we both got emotional. It was just two young girls yeah. living the dream and feeling a moment of gratitude and with gratitude sharing it with each other. So and literally we both had tears in our eyes after that <gasps> moment. And then we had to like get out of the hug because we're like, we'll, we'll start weeping over here, which we don't want. Um, so yeah, that was actually quite a, quite a special moment. Lovely. And you know, while we're talking about the national awards, I think a lot of us also read about it, noticed it, Alia, that you chose to wear your wedding sari for the occasion. While it's also a very emotional statement, I'd like to say that it's also a big statement in sustainability. You, nobody could have done it better to, uh, to upcycle, recycle, whatever you may want to call it, your wedding sari. So what was, was there a thought, conscious thought? Um, see, you know, whenever there's a big event or a big moment coming up, the first thought is you start preparing for it. Okay, what am I going to wear? What am I going to do? And, you know, how is it going to be? And when, when it was announced um, on, on social media, my mind instantly went to, okay, you know, where is it going to be and what am I going to wear? And instinctively, it, I just felt like, I think I'm going to rewear my wedding sari. And it just felt very me because that sari you know was thought and ideated you know done beautifully by Sabya Sashi Mukherjee but it was a lot of me the yeah. white and gold combination and certain symbols it it it, it was um who I <coughs> really feel I, I wear a garment that I felt my most myself in yeah. you know um so this was a moment that was also very special for different reasons that was a different occasion which was extremely special and this was a different occasion which was extremely special so a special outfit can be worn for a special occasion true more more than once and i don't think i was doing anything that people maybe have not already been doing for many years wo kehte na ghar ke ghar mein ke shaadi ka sari pehen lenge ya wo is kam se sangeet ka shaadi pehen lenge beti ki shaadi ka sari pehen lenge it's just the thing that for those who may already be doing it they look at it and say yes we're already doing this it'll just encourage them yeah. that conversation more yeah. and for those who feel that you know, for a special occasion, I have to wear an outfit that's not been seen before. Has anyone seen this or not? I just wanted to change that a little bit around and just say, look, listen, you can wear an outfit. I've worn this outfit. The whole world has seen it. Yeah. Like for, you know, days after I got married. Um, but it doesn't matter. It's because it's the person that's wearing that outfit. That That's what matters the most. Yeah, I think the statement worked out beautifully. As you're saying, uh, <clears throat> I would say commoners do say that 
भाई की शादी में पहन लेंगे अपनी शादी का जोड़ा एंड यू नो ऑल ऑफ दैट बट टिपिकली आई डोंट थिंक टू मैनी सेलिब्रिटीज एंड स्पेशली दोज एट योर स्टैचर हु who gone ahead and made that statement so it does seem very relatable to a comment yeah person. i think it's just us being mindful that you don't <laughs> always need to buy a new outfit yeah. um it's maybe the more conscious thing to do yeah. and you may not be able to do that all the time but if you land up doing it a couple of times it's yeah. a big statement to make for yourself true and for the planet so true well before i go on i'm just uh, reminding the audiences that we'd have barely a few minutes after the session to take audience questions so if you do want to ask her something please there's a chit on your table and write something and pass it on to rini so that uh, once we have time we could look at that <clears throat> so alia coming back to the to the last couple of years in your life and that i mean i'm i'm sure that there, there've been many milestone events that may have happened right when you debuted in the film industry 11 years ago 23 films that you've done and some of which have been spectacular in terms of uh, you know performances i've done 23 films you've done 23 in 11 years so oh, that's what research tells us unless there are films uh, i'm not counting your debut in sangharsh as a child artist Do you i remember would count that? that because i think that's the only way it'll maybe add up to uh, 20 plus anyway yeah the number yeah. not big yeah perhaps so basically what i'm saying is that uh, last year i think the middle of the last year career wise started with brahmastra and then the way this year uh opened for you and then you know with uh, with darlings with gangu with uh now with uh, rocky and rani uh this all happened at a time when bollywood's really been going through the biggest roller coaster that bollywood could ever imagine this year's been good with some of the blockbuster uh, things but there was also a time when people were just not willing to come to theaters and uh, rocky and rani did supremely well and similarly darlings even though it was uh, an ott uh, film again got you so much of acclaim would you say that um, uh, this this has been a milestone period for you that's that's one and and a related question is that when you started out as shanaya in student of the year so many years back to gangu which got you a national award and they've been there's been razi there's been highway there's there's, there's been urta punjab have you been grow, going up that ladder on more intensity into your roles um i think yeah what you said about um there was a certain nervousness post the pandemic i think in every industry not just the indian film industry um to understand how the consumer how the audience is really going to respond to the content that we've created um a lot of the films that i had worked on prior to the pan- pandemic and some even during uh, came back to back with gangu and darlings and brahmastra this all just happened like back to back so it was a very overwhelming year because it's a lot of effort that you put in, in into any project or business when you put in years of effort team work especially everybody is waiting with bated breath for the final outcome so when the final when you pass on the final outcome that's always like a whew, you know it's a bit <laughs> of a relief I'm not sure I'm someone who takes a step back and looks at my career like oh that's a milestone moment or that's a milestone moment I don't um I don't cut to a wide shot that often <laughs> in film language um I like to just keep my head in the game and just just move forward with each like literally on the friday I let the film go to the audience and then whatever the fate of the film I accept it I assess if things not don't go well I assess what didn't go well if things go well I you know have a grateful heart and I move on it's the way I've always been and I think that keeps me really comfortable and, and grounded I don't really yeah. swim in successes or you know um drown <laughs> in failures I like to learn good or bad from each experience and move on um but of course when i meet people and they give me love for a movie for example rocky rani i was in new york right after and people kept coming up to me and telling me that they watched the film 3 4 times and that's literally all you want to hear from hmm. an audience and you just feel so happy um speaking about my characters what was your question well the characters that you've done the, that that growth in intensity is very visible so for instance would you do a shanaya at this point in your oh. career interesting hmm i don't think i can play i don't know actually never say never i never limit myself 
आई रियली गो विथ माई इंस्टिंग आई डेफिनेटली फील माई पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ कोर्स एज एनी बडीज पर्सनैलिटी वुड हैज इवॉल्व ओवर द लास्ट टेन ईयर्स सो मे बी माई चॉइस ऑफ मूवीज द वे आई अप्रोच एवरी फिल्म द प्रोसेस हैज बिकम मोर स्ट्रक्चर्ड बट स्टिल आई वुड से आई हैव नो स्ट्रक्चर वेन इट कम्स टू प्रोसेस um i like to just surrender to my filmmaker and i believe every filmmaker is different from the other so hence by default i will have a different process for every film true um and i like to really just kind of give in to it yeah but you know you spoke about the box office pressure and uh, forever once been hearing that while the box office pressure for the image or the stature of it is there for actors the biggest stress point is for producers because uh, there was a time when actors would take their fee and at least would have a peaceful sleep but a producer through every stage of the film has a restless time of course and then you consciously chose to become a producer so early on in your career <laughs> you uh, co-produced darling and now you're producing jigra so uh, uh, what what made you take the risk if i may call it to turn into a producer so early on Yeah, so uh, Jigra as well. I'm co-producing with Dharma Productions. Yeah. Um, you know, I had such a lovely experience while working on Darlings as a producer. Um, it was such a creative ride, and I learned so much. Hmm. And um, I, I, I genuinely believe. In fact, uh, I was recently at um, uh, the Olympic Committee session, and our Prime Minister was speaking, and he said something that really stayed with me. he said there are no losers in life they're just winners and learners hmm. and i believe i'm a learner at every step i'm always learning i don't believe i have all the answers and of course it's a bit of a tight rope to walk when you're learning as a producer because um you know you're putting something down there you're putting content out there um but i just felt a very deep sense of satisfaction when i was hmm. creatively involved in that journey i consider myself a creative producer sure so that experience felt very wholesome it felt yeah. very holistic it was not inward i was not just thinking about my acting my role how am i coming across in the film i was thinking about the film as a whole hmm. so i felt that okay now i want to put together content not necessarily content that i am acting in um which and we are at eternal sunshine productions working on various things yeah um and i also thought that it's a good opportunity like i did with darlings to give support to a new talent mm. uh, like i did with jasmeet uh, she was trying to get a film on the floor for many years and yeah. she came to me at darlings and i loved it and she's extremely bright right um so that's the endeavor with eternal as well we're working mm. with a bunch of new new talent mm. uh, currently still in development but even putting that together and making that see the light of day is an uphill task true because there is so much content out there that everyone the studios the platforms everybody is playing it very carefully as they should because mm. you don't want to just have you know n number of content pieces right. out there so that itself is a learning yeah. um step right now well marrying creativity with commerce is a is a tricky process in the sense that uh, a producer is always out to tell actors ki jaldi kar do finish jaldi kar do itna budget over budget ja raha hai and you know all all those kind of hang up so now since you understand the actors side of it and you know that nobody wants to waste the producer's money but still as a producer when you worked on darlings and now that you're working on jigra um, has has the uh, has the actor alia uh, changed a little bit because there's also the producer alia i think set. i was always very conscious um in fact what changed in me as a um as being little bit more conscious on each day spent on shoot was after i started my own brand yeah ed mama then my attitude towards brand shoots changed mm. always i was always very professional always on time always punctual always you know do whatever the client and the agency and everybody wants but there was a certain amount of um uh just awareness that came after ed mama my brand my conscious yeah. cl- children's c- conscious clothing brand came to life uh because i realized okay that every second matters and yeah. it's all resting not all but a lot of this is resting on the way this campaign comes out and the marketing of this campaign right you know uh, the fact that she's mentioned edamama i'm sure a lot of you would know but 
when we when we call her a very astute and a very mindful investor uh, it'll be good to know that edamama her brand which is uh, which is in the line of sustainable clothing got recently acquired by uh, reliance for 150 crores that's not really what people expect out of a startup founder to have so much time uh, uh, to give to your investment uh risk or whatever your venture your investment venture so how much of your time goes into edamama and how did you feel when there was such a valuation done of your venture so actually uh, edamama is this, is a brand that i i was the only sole founder of um so many people think that you know when you think of a celebrity and a brand they either investing in it or they endorsing it so they've not really done anything there's no money that's been put down wo log aa rahe hain aur ja rahe that kind of feeling sometimes comes there is a perception yeah. but i have to be very honest and candid that the 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 germ of edamama came from a actually a place of insecurity it was 2 years or 4 years in 2 2 to 4 years into my film making a journey and i was just like listen i never want to have all my eggs in one basket um so one should come up with another way of you know sustaining and to move forward or something to put your mind to cuz you never know what if this doesn't work out i should at least have something else you know yeah. it just literally came from that very simple space um and i looked for the gap in the market and there was a feeling that there was a dearth of a home grown indian um vocal for local children's clothing brand yeah and there from there was born edamama and we launched in the middle of the pandemic hmm. smack in the middle of the pandemic which was a real struggle i mean literally break a leg situation happened hmm. um but was there was only learning after that and it's been such a fulfilling journey it's not always easy for me to give my time to it hmm. which is why i put together a team of ninjas i call them ninjas because they really are like that <laughs> and we started with a team of four to five people and now to have you know a giant like reliance come yeah. on board and i was not looking for money as much as i was looking for a strategic partner yeah. because we had done the clothes thing you know i launched maternity when i was pregnant filling a gap in my own wardrobe um and i felt like okay now there's a point where in which i can strategize and build this brand further to give it scale to give it scale yeah and i have this whole world of edamama in my head hmm. and i'm a storyteller at heart and i will always be a storyteller and edamama also st- started with a story hmm. and the story is of a young girl and her dog ed and they go on adventures and they save the planet wow. and they talk to the planet and they talk to the trees and they talk to animals and that's the that's the ideology behind it so we put that and we made it a conscious clothing brand which is also affordable so it came out of a place but it turned into something that i didn't expect it to turn into uh, so i'm very grateful for all the people that i you know um on my team that helped me bring edmama to where it is sure. and yeah now the journey is now the journey has well, begun but now that it's uh, it's picked up scale ghar mein wo bad gayi hai apni apna impression ghar mein ye ho gaya hai ki any financial decisions let's ask alia because she clearly is the more mindful investor in the family i think definitely there is a certain but i don't think we ever matlab give wo ghar ke andar ghar mein koi praise nahi karta hai you know hum log always thoda sa we you, you give love also with a little bit of like ha ha okay let's not get it you know don't want to get get to anyone's head um but in my life it's still my mother yeah who makes all my financial <laughs> decisions without her go ahead i do nothing well then i must say that you've made your mom very proud with the way because edamama is something that we know of but there are also a few other investments like this one which is which is picking up uh, flowers from the pool. temple pool Jeep. and turning it into home fragrances Jeep. Jeep. what a beautiful idea yeah. and again exactly you know, so you're one on one hand you're lessening the waste possibly that comes but you're also giving a lot of job opportunities to women because sure. all these all the way the, the women are picking these flowers up yeah. and they're adding you know um to this incense and stuff and there's a lot of other things that are planned for in pool as well um that are not only good for the environment not only good for the planet but also giving so many more job opportunities to women wonderful and another thing that happened big time in your in your life's journey last year was was marriage uh, followed by motherhood and we'd come to that but marriage uh again you know from from the bhat family to being a part of kapoor khandan 
again both film families were were these families very different was was your did your daily life really as a married woman change from one family to the other no yeah i don't know <laughs> i mean i really of course there's a certain uh i think i would say my life really truly changed after my daughter was born that's when the change really came um otherwise in you know the way our families kind of immediately got along there was a lot of warmth there was a lot of love and that didn't really change overnight just we got just because yeah. we got married that warmth and love was there a day before the wedding and that same warmth and love was there a day after um but yeah the minute raha came into our lives it's just sunshine and stars and <laughs> you know clouds and rainbows so i think this eternal sunshine the name <laughs> of your production house actually should refer to raha <laughs> or it yeah. does maybe is that how the name came about no actually eternal sunshine was uh, because inspired by a film that i love a lot eternal sunshine of the spotless mind i also yeah. love the sun i'm obsessed with the sun like whenever i'm you know typing anything in the sun emoji is my favorite emoji to go to i also believe movies are eternal hmm. so they kind of came together and yeah well we've spoken about motherhood now and let us talk about raha because you know what i did was that um, uh, before coming on to the session i tweeted about uh, what are the questions that people who can't make it here would like to ask us um, uh, would would like me to ask alia and uh, i think the maximum number of questions were pertaining to raha <laughs> she uh, she turns a year old uh, uh, day after knock on wood uh, there's been so much talk about how you've been lovely protective parents um, i i do remember my team telling me my team of photographers telling me that even though ranbir and alia do not want the child to be photographed for right reasons your uh, choice of privacy but they were very sweet in showing us off the record showing us the photograph because they wanted blessings for the child so how has uh, how has raha's coming into your life change the career part of you because uh, i'll i'll tell you where i'm coming from uh, this is also a very typical perception amongst uh, uh, common people that uh, it, privilege logon ko bacche palne mein mushkil nahi hoti you know unhone uh, they, there are nannies there's a battery of people who are going to be taking care so they can have a child and then very soon come back into a very hectic professional life but with raha has that happened and uh, how do you look at this whole experience of now having a career with raha also a priority see there is there is truth to privilege and i have to acknowledge that that yeah. i can i do have the comfort of professional help um if i am unavailable and if i need to be somewhere a lot of mothers don't have that and i can't begin to imagine how difficult that might be um having said that i rather answer this question from a different lens as how is it as two working parents as a man and a woman who love their work and who don't want to lose that side of them but also want to be extremely present parents how do we handle yeah. because i know a lot of young generation you know um parents together today maybe if they're watching this they might have a little doubt if they're expecting that how will they manage and the truth is you have to have your priorities right my priority and our priority will always be raha and raha first yeah and um while our work is a huge part of who we are and i know and i don't want to lose that side of me because it's what makes me happy it 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 what it's what keeps the fire alive and some day when she's old she will respect that in us i respect that part about her parents but we try even though we have professional help we try to work our schedules around each other so yes. where some of us one of us is with her at all is times with her. yeah so say for the first 6 months of the year after she was born of course i was the one who was most hands on naturally also because i was feeding and i was there and just time for my body to sort of bounce back um and when i took up jigra ranbir cleared his schedule out for the next couple of months so i could be at work with, at ease and not think and not be worried and there are night uh, schedules in jigra exact lot of nights night, night schedules which actually work out really well for me because i get the day with her i land up sleeping only 5 hours but i think that's one of the things you give up as a parent you sleep less but i also want to say 
I think we as celebrities maybe get asked this question a lot so we suddenly like build up the celebrity or like how is it being like working parents or working mothers but women work yeah, yeah. you know my nanny who comes for my work she has three kids at kids home for own, yeah. my and even the women who stay at home and work that's also work stay at home moms are also working Lots. a lot um खेत में भी अगर जाते तो बच्चे को साथ में लेके जाते हैं या स्कूल में ड्रॉप करके मतलब वो बहुत नॉर्मल चीज है वर्किंग इज अ वेरी ह्यूज पार्ट ऑफ आर कल्चर वे वर्कर्स एंड वील वर्क टिल द लास्ट ब्रेथ सो आई डोंट थिंक आई थिंक वी आर गिविंग आर सेल्स और मे बी सेलिब्रिटीज टू मच इम्पॉर्टेंस बट आई हैव टू बी ऑनेस्ट इन कैंडेड एंड से दैट यू कान डू एवरी थिंग राइट बट यू जस्ट यू कान बी अ परफेक्ट पेरेंट यू जस्ट हैव टू बी गुड इनफ and you just have to keep your priorities straight and of course there are days where i am emotionally like it is difficult for me to leave her and you know even for coming to delhi today like i like, guess like i just want to keep kissing her face i don't want to even leave for a second but wo hai and she's you know touch wood she's okay she's happy yeah. and i'll go back and i'll get all my cuddles and love and you know <laughs> Make sure she's not out of my I'm sight. Sure. So and the if, balance is important. Yeah, and if you and Ranveer have to travel again, it's mummy ji or mummy either of the moms taking yeah, care. Yeah, I of. think her grandparents. So, <laughs> मतलब they are waiting for a chance. They're like, please, तुम लोग holiday पे जाओ. Leave her with us. We want all the time with her. Yeah. So yeah, that way I'm very blessed to have not only, of course, the professional help, but a really enthusiastic family. Uh, that's always willing to babysit. Another thing that your fans wanted to know was that now that she's turning a year old, would are they likely to see a glimpse of her? So I have to say this because I think, like again, you know, where I don't want it to seem like oh, I'm hiding my daughter's face and all. I'm proud of her. Like literally, the camera is not rolling right now. I'll put her giant image up on a screen <laughs> over here because I love her. Like I'm, pr- we are proud of our baby. but i think what i'm trying what i think the intention with it with which it came out initially is we are new parents we don't know how we feel about her face being splashed all over instagram she's barely a year old yeah. or all over social media we don't find the need for her to be a you know a moment of paparazzi currently she's still she's still too little uh, but it's not like not like we'll never let anybody see her face it's not that it's just like i think we needed to get more comfortable with this parenting thing and come to a comfortable decision ki okay, okay now we're ready and whenever that moment is it could be now it could be in the new future it could be whenever whenever we're ready we'll you know it'll happen and fair without point. giving it too much pressure or too much importance <laughs> true that fair point uh, alia another uh, another thing that happened uh, recently in your career was a lot of international exposure one by way of heart of stone which which was a film that you did uh but also by way of uh, some international collaborations like you took up the gucci ambassadorship uh you you attended the met gala has there again been a conscious decision that being an international influencer is now the way to be uh because we are all thinking global uh see i think like for example doing a film like heart of stone was a choice of doing an english language movie like mm. i the year before that did a telugu language movie like maybe in hopefully in the new future i'll do a malayalam language movie or a, you know what I'm, i i i think the idea is to broaden your horizons True. to as many languages reach out to as many you know industries get outside your box comfort box and comfort zone again and again mm. so that was the intention um and whereas whereas gucci and everything else i think i've said this before um it's an association that i feel is most organic because of how much i believe in the like you know i i really naturally connect with the products of the brand but gucci come has come to me because gucci wants india gucci doesn't want me gucci yeah. wants india and i yeah. represent maybe a certain demographic that speaks to you know True. a certain section in india um yeah. so i think it's only proof of um how booming the indian market is mm. and how much anticipation there is to bring on the consumers from india to global brands as yeah. well so for instance when you went to the met gala and now that india is practically a growth story that everyone seems to be talking about did you did you see a perceptible difference in the way now indian celebrities are being treated abroad i didn't feel anything different so i think that's the difference it was mm. i was treated the way 
anybody Which also should be treated yeah a lot. um of course south asian representation can only become better and better i don't think we should ever stop there that can only become more um but like even when i'm traveling and you know i i there's i um there was somebody sent me a picture of a mandarin oriental uh shoot that i did for mandarin oriental in paris and somebody sent me that picture and i just looked at it and i smiled and i said i just need to continuously keep in mind no matter where i go whether it's london or paris or met gala or for gucci to milan or whatever i'm always taking india with me and i represent um that side of where we come from and that's something that i'll always be very i'll, I'll take very mindfully and be very responsible of yeah and uh, this is particular of women celebrities though i'd say that everyone has that pressure now but uh, all your appearances not yours but all celeb appearances especially at international forums etc also uh, attract a lot of attention positive or negative on social media not just the appearances uh, uh, and you've been at the receiving end of it but again for everyone this whole phenomenon of social media trolling becoming excessive excessive personal sometimes toxic if i may use that word uh, uh, people have an opinion on someone's married life their relationships how how they are uh, in terms of with, with their other colleagues etc so uh, it's come your way and how have you does it does it anger you does it bother you uh, and if it does how do you deal with it so i mean i said this earlier i have lived my life in the public eye so i've gone through different stages with um any sort of scrutiny that maybe i have faced uh, maybe initially i was a little bit more defensive you know younger you're a little bit more like are but why are they saying this maybe later on i was a little bit more dismissive like mm. forget it nobody cares but i think i've grown into a person who genuinely feels that i have nothing to complain about and i don't think it's fair the position that i'm in maybe the privilege that i have um it doesn't look nice for me to be like oh i don't like that people are saying maybe not nice things about me hmm. i don't feel that that's correct so even though maybe sometimes you don't want to read nasty things about you or your relationships or your family or your loved ones or anything like that you don't want to do it nobody enjoys it but i'm not going to ever fight with my audience because those people writing it they are my audience so as long as they my movies are doing well and i'm entertaining them when i say i'm grateful for all the love these are the moments that i actually have to show my gratitude um not only when things are all hunky dory and people are clapping for me but maybe when there are no claps and there's a bunch of trolls i still have to maintain that gratitude because that came my way and i am here who i am because of the audience true so yes i also feel it's important to differentiate between constructive criticism and just endless hate because a person can just look at me and not like my face and i i can't really do anything about that so i have to also differentiate between the two but i also feel we have become extremely sort of subjects of what we see on that screen i rather focus on my daily interactions with people i have never experienced that any kind of troll up front for example mm. no negativity up front so uh, that's what i choose to focus on and if there is some chatter i hope it dies down and yeah. you know you kind of move forward i'm i'm at the end of the day i'm i'm a human being that i'm bound to say maybe four stupid things in public and people may make fun of that mm. but i may also say 14 intelligent things exactly yeah but sometimes what happens is also kind of negativity travels faster than positivity yeah. but i believe in the larger picture so i want to only lead every moment with love and kindness and love conquers all that's all i need yeah, to say well that's so true and also social media sometimes seems unforgiving but if the other person is willing to accept and sort of so in for instance karan was earlier here with charlie's theron in a session and he in a very nice but a self deprecating way he was talking about all things that he's been trolled for and how it used to affect him beyond a point and he would he would shy away from talking about that but he's now talking so openly about the very things that he'd been trolled for yeah so i think know, it's about like it's not like we are 
nobody's unfazed i mean nobody gets like unaffected by any sort of negative co- like you have moments of vulnerability yeah you have moments of feeling okay you know did i say something wrong or did that come across that way and you feel even maybe regret okay i shouldn't have said that or i shouldn't do that maybe also i have become more personal as i become more private a person as yeah. a result but it's not like i'm ever going to fault anyone for it i'm never even in my life spoken back or say you can't say this about me or you don't say this about me even when people like sometimes lies like like complete lies are spoken yeah i have never said anything back because i believe that's not the way i want to conduct myself i'm openly going to be vulnerable but i'm openly also going to be kind and accepting ki jo bolna hai bolo as long as you enjoy my movies and as long as i manage to entertain you yeah that's all that matters and with each of these movies that are turning out to be successes uh, and your, your your role getting more and more evolved and mature does that also act as a sort of vindication for the fact that uh, now you're being offered very very intelligent if i may use that word intelligent roles yaar i've always had um touch wood uh, good good roles come my way with good filmmakers and um i maybe i've become like i said because after thinking like a much larger picture maybe my mind and um space has opened up a little bit where i'm not just paying attention to the role but i've always actually been the one who's goes for the film first yeah. and then you work on the role because if the film works everything works um so yeah i think i'm i'm very grateful for all the people that i've worked with yeah. and i'm working with and and sometimes you have to create opportunities or create like sometimes you feel like doing a certain part or you feel like putting a certain thing out there i may have to create that opportunity for myself um to wo dekhenge jab hoga um you know a lot of uh, actresses that uh, i've known all along do not like the term female centric or women centric movies and i i think for the right reasons Correct. because unless there are male centric movies which there aren't so Absolutely. why should they be women centric but the kind of roles that you've done let's say with the razi yeah. or or darlings or gangu uh, uh, there seems to be there seems to be a statement that you're making in terms of taking the entire onus of how that film would do or not do uh, on your shoulders is that too much of a stress is is that a stress leading the film on your shoulders i would say yes and no yes only because i mean if the film god forbid were to not do well it does sort of reflect badly on your report card but no also because it's not just me making the movie and i say this um it's not just alia acting and alia directing and alia talking to alia and being with alia it's not just that a film comes to life because of various factors together so when a film does well it's not just my success it's the whole team success and most importantly the director's success because the director is the captain of the ship yeah. um so i actually rely wholly and solely on my director and i genuinely believe that if the film is good it will do well a good film will always do well and a good film can't do well with one person yeah so yes there is that pressure maybe i will take for my you know just for my satisfaction that okay i hope it chal jaye types but i know that at the end of the day it's a team effort and um jo hoga so hoga types <laughs> uh, but but you're not averse to any genre and when i say genre i mean also in terms of doing multi stars and now that you've seen success hmm. as as a person who can take the entire film on their their own shoulders this these multi star of film full masala films with several actors etc is it's still on right i think it depends on again it depends on the, the film script, and it depends yeah. on the part and what i'm adding to it i think um, ensemble <laughs> films are great uh films when you get see various actors together and they're all playing a little part and contributing to the larger picture i think it looks it looks yeah. really fun and you feel really happy especially when you see your favorite actors come together so i think it really just depends for me it's yeah. all on the script and i don't think oh, too many other actors in the film i don't want to do it i'm not giving myself so much importance ever which is your favorite role which is which is a film that you've felt very very proud for having signed and if at all there's a film that you regret passing by difficult to choose between your own films okay. so i would say i'm going to um, use 
it's what someone said to me the next one is always the best one so the next one <laughs> is the one i'm most excited about you can say which is jigra um uh, i have no regrets of passing anything on because i also feel and that sounds very cliche but it is true because i feel like i am here today because of all the mistakes i made and the right choices perhaps that i've made um i have other regrets like not regrets but i wish maybe you know now when i reflect 11 years into the industry i wish i picked up um maybe a dance form um 11 years ago that i would should have seen through you know i think it would have made me a much better maybe dancer or helped with my posture and body language a bit maybe i should have picked up like a um sort of like a martial arts or something like that so i have those sort of things where i'm like i you i know they say it's never too late but i think of it in that way now more of an assessment of like a holistic way about how i could maybe today have been better if i had maybe picked up something physical a couple of years ago and i think that would be the only advice i would give to people is that pick up one sport one dance form or one inst- something which is physical it'll it'll bring a completely different body language in you yeah well as a 30 year old and having achieved so much again in terms of acting and production is direction on the cards uh, <laughs> if at all at this moment is does that thought even occur no i think yeah. i would be a very impatient director <laughs> you have to be very very patient um to be a director um no i don't think i have it in me also i at least again never say never but i think i don't have a I don't have that kind of command over a story to tell it. I can aid other storytellers together and kind of push them together and say okay go have fun. As a producer I can do that. But I don't think I can be the one telling the story myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well it does seem Although like, I yeah. although Sanjay sorry. sir sorry to cut you. Yeah. Sanjay sir Sanjay Leela Bansali once told me Allah you should direct a film one day and I'm like sir he said yeah <laughs> you will see. So I said and coming, coming from him, from him I was yeah. like I couldn't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, on on Sanjay, tell us tell us the experience of working with Sanjay, somebody like him, when when film is actually like in its true sense an art form, right? Yeah. From the sets to how he makes a person, and now with Beju Bavra, people have a lot of uh, they there is anticipation in the air. I don't know if you can talk about any of that or not, but uh, mm-hmm. tell us about Gangu and the experience with Sanjay. Um, I've said this before, and I'll say it again that I. was never the same actor after i walked once i walked into the sets of gangu by kathiawadi and i walked off that set i was no longer the same actor no longer the same person yeah. and that's just what sanjay sir brings out of you i can do i felt like i could do anything after doing that movie <laughs> and you know um of course the next challenge will definitely come up but it just feels so rewarding and so um it's it's just it's a very giant self journey experience along with your filmmaker with with him that i had um it was a lot of hard work a lot of just daily giving everything that you had is not one percent is he the strictest director that you've worked with i wouldn't call him strict hmm. he, he's not strict he's like he's a creative like yeah. he's a creator he's a magician like he he hmm. brings the magic out of you but for him it's more about like i remember we used to keep joking about it we used to um every time we used to start a scene we used to first talk about the scene you know like a, we call you a blocking or a rehearsal so before every scene when he would start talking about it he would say this is a very important scene this is the most important <laughs> scene which he would land up saying eventually about every scene in the film so finally they would say every scene is important he started laughing he said yeah that's the way i go with every scene it's too important like this is what the film relies on and stands on so you have to go it to go into it with that mm. conviction and with that energy and you land up giving it your all and you'll be like mm. by the end of it you know i don't even know how time would pass on that set it's just yeah. honestly truly the mo- one of the most rewarding experiences uh, uh, i think there must have also been uh, a work culture stuff that you may have picked after working with uh, sanjay because that's how he is on the sets so somebody was telling me that even on the sets of jigra for instance now or may- maybe that's been a habit you don't take your phone and you're completely into it when you're you're shooting so has that been a habit is that something that you've picked up yeah actually strangely it started from his set 
because everybody is so on to it i would not look at my phone and all in between shots and it's a very bad habit because you're waiting around and you're just like scrolling endlessly on your phone but with him everybody is just sort of on their best behavior on their toes and you also don't feel like you want to get out of the moment and go and we would shoot a lot of nights there as well so there's really nothing to go to the phone to so apart from now um you know just maybe checking up uh, you know f- uh, on every odd thing at home otherwise i in fact when i'm on a shoot schedule i don't even like i delete all my social media and i make sure none of that is there so i have no distraction and i like also maybe feeling a bit bored like i think a lot of us sometimes forget that okay just looking endlessly at the sky or looking at something and just dozing and or trailing off is something that you can do yeah. and not always be kind of neck down into the screen true that true that but outside of films what is the what is your me time going to well now my me time now is all raha, raha time uh-huh. um but of course a lot of it is just working out sleeping hmm. watching movies yeah. um catching up on content reading just the usual but th- this spending year, time with family i know this year has been wonderful for 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 the films for the big films and people have started to say that only uh, films that are completely uh, large huge in the in canvas in terms of and brahmastra was one such film and now you know one is looking forward to the to part 2 but even with jawan pathan you know you know big action films uh, where does that leave us with with those who would want romcom small hmm. nice script packed no so i think theaters. that the romcoms and the romantic films can do well i think what one has to keep in mind is the budgets when you're making those films yeah. like i said i believe a good film will always do well of course we know the big pot boiler the massive entertainer films you know the tent pole films people are rushing to the theaters for because they are the larger you know they are the larger than life experience but um, it is important for the mid level budget films to do well as well in the theater and the small budget movies or small budget as you call them but um, i think time will tell us to how one as pro- as producers and as people we manage the economics versus the money coming in um, and which kind of films people are stepping out for and which which ones they are happy to watch maybe sitting at home um because it's also become very expensive to go to the movies yeah. i think one really has to consciously make that decision okay i will go out for this particular movie so it's on us actually to manage the budgets accordingly maybe for the mid level films and if uh, budget hadn't been a constraint let's say from a producer's perspective do you think a film could do as well on ott or does a film in its real sense needs to be a theatrical to reach the largest number of people ah uh, I think the theatrical is a um, more immediate understanding of commerce. OTT yeah. takes time; it's more word of mouth. Yeah. But a good film will always leave an impression in people's hearts and minds. Look at darlings. S- exactly. I mean, yeah. I, I don't want to speak of my own film like that. <laughs> I feel like sometimes what happens <laughs> is true. we, yeah. in fact, should forget where we saw the film. It should just be we saw that film and we loved it. So actually, a lot of people saw Gangu by. on ott mm. much after on netflix um across the world in fact um, but it had an impact on them and that's what matters so of course the commercial success of a film matters for the producer and for the makers involved and for the, us to declare it um a successful venture um but ghoom phir ke the film has to connect and if the film will connect and the budget is not crazy then it will be a success True i mean that. it's not as simple i'm making it seem super simple but it's all against the same thing you focus on the film tell the story and tell it well yeah and now even in telling that story languages also have ceased to matter so there is no south north anymore no, as as it shouldn't cinema. be it's the indian film industry and that's right. the way it should be another thing that a lot of fans wrote to me about was whether they can see you working with raja mauli again and again you know how how is that expi you've really worked with legends so so there is a lot No wonder this is how evolved you've been as a thirty-year-old actor. Very kind of you to say. I mean, of course, I everybody. I think every actor in the country is waiting to, you know, be in a Raj, SS Raja Mouli film. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just in line. <laughs> But do I see a hint in that I might do a Malayalam film? Is there a hint for no, the no, fans? No, no. Yeah, I mean, I see. Bold, yeah, because I'm watching <laughs> Malayalam content and I love it. But I'm just saying that. Oh, I say. What I meant is that I, sh- I want to do as many languages. 
if time permitting and if my skill can add to that or not right we've almost come to the end of uh, our time and uh, rini are there any audience questions rini rini's gossip are there any audience questions that you've received you haven't so i wanted to actually end this with again the one question which maximum number of people asked me to ask you which was which was your advice to a lot of people who want to be entering the film industry where there's a lot of perceptive fear about uh, uh, there's so much a struggle you can't if you don't know people you can't really get a chance to get a foothold etc uh, you've been there seen it uh, what is what is your mantra or advice to honestly i don't yeah I, i don't think i'm in a position to give advice because um i think uh, you know speaking about that conversation um there is a certain feeling of maybe maybe i had it too easy um in the beginning and maybe i got the opportunity too quickly um which perhaps earlier i had a different response to but now i think i only look if look at it from point of um empathy uh, because i understand it's really really hard um and i and i empathize with that and i can only acknowledge acknowledge the maybe speedy start that i got um, but i do promise and and kind of wow to um give it my 110% every day like i got into the door easy but once i'm in the room i'm really working hard and i need just need to continue to work hard for the audience so i feel uncomfortable giving advice because um, it may not be perceived well well really it's a, that's a torture that you've inflicted on me now <laughs> with this okay uh, uh, rahul gupta has a question which says what do you think about the future of multiplexes in this in this rising era of ott oh very interesting question i really believe rahul that the theater experience in a country like ours cannot be replaced uh because there is a certain community feeling of families going out to the theater and watching a movie and enjoying that film together um so i do feel we maybe as an industry have to work harder yes the multiplexes there is a lot of ch- chatter and conversation that you know the concessions inside and the food and beverage etc land up being very expensive more yeah. even more so than the ticket um so i think one has to really maybe the co- the stuff that comes into the big screens has to really be worth people's while yeah. um and that is the endeavor i think it's always a learning process it's always a learning curve but the last month has been quite fabulous for the industry um so people are very charged yeah. to learn from that and take that forward super uh and there's another question from jigyasa and she says this is about edamama and how uh you know do, do your personal beliefs coincide with the vision statement which actually you've answered in a way but now that there is a physical store uh, also there's a pop up we will have physical up. stores soon yeah. um and yes um my personal beliefs do coincide with the philosophy of edamama i have to say though again i mentioned this before that we are human so i may not do everything right or we not may not take every right step towards being conscious towards our planet towards our environment but it's just about asking those few questions maybe seeking those few answers and taking those tiny steps towards living a more conscious future um because it's a shared planet and we have to leave it behind for our kids and the generations to come um so the conscious clothing brand came from being more aware with what fashion can do maybe um to the rising carbon levels so use natural fabrics and no plastic and natural dyes and green denims and stuff like that and recycle paper and recycle plastic or whatever packaging um but also the prints and stuff on the clothes are all raising a younger newer generation of young planeteers beautiful well these are very very wise sensible words uh, from alia bhat that we are ending this session on alia all the very best thank you for so jigra and for everything that you decide to do in your future and thanks a lot for taking out the time thank you thank spend. you so much thank you